Welcome to Integral Calculus. Before we proceed, I'd like to first go over some of the main ideas in differential calculus. And really the main subject of interest there was the derivative of a function. And recall that the derivative of a function is another function that represents its rate of change, right? So for instance, if this is the graph of the function y equals f of x, then the derivative of the function f at the point a is exactly equal to the slope of this tangent line. And we denote this as f prime of a to denote that it's the first derivative of f evaluated at a. We also call this the instantaneous rate of change. Of the function f. Right, so it's a measure of how fast the function is changing exactly at that given moment in time. For instance, we could consider this as the graph of, say, the displacement of, I don't know, a car. And if this graph represents displacement, then the derivative represents the velocity function. At any given time, t. Right, and so all those differentiation rules that you learned about before, like the product rule, the chain rule, logarithmic differentiation, those are all ways for us to compute the derivative of a function given its original formula. And, well, what did we use derivatives for? Well, I'll, I'll show you two important applications of it that you would have seen when you talked about derivatives. First is optimization. Optimization means you're finding the maximum or the minimum of a given quantity. And so, again, looking at your graph of a function, well, how can we use derivative information to tell us where the maximum or the minimum points are? Well, this point over here, let's call that C, we call this a local min or a local minimum of the function because on a neighborhood around C is the point that has the smallest y value. And the way that derivatives tell us that C is the local minimum is the fact that to the left of C, your tangent lines are downward sloping and to the right of C, your tangent lines are upward sloping, right? In other words, on some interval to the left of C, F prime, if this function is F, F prime is negative. On some interval after C, F prime is positive. Right, so that's one example of derivatives telling us something useful, which is where on a function does it have these local minimum points or local maximum points, as in the case of this other point on the left? Approximation is another nice application that taking derivatives allows us to do. For instance, you may have a curve here. Again, let's assume this is the function y equals f of x. If we knew 
the equation of the tangent line to y equals f of x at x equals a. Well, what's nice about this is, you know, tangent lines are lines. Well, what I mean by that is that tangent lines are linear functions, which means they're quite easy to compute. Right? You may know them from the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b, or the point slope form y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. It's easy to get the y value given an x value. And so in cases where f might be hard to compute, if we know this tangent line equation, then for values of x close to a, right, so for instance, I can take a value just here to the right of a, let's call that b, then I can actually approximate the value of f of b by instead looking at the value of b on this tangent line. Right, so if I call the tangent l, then we, this is l of b. Right, so that's another nice application of the derivative and we will actually expand on this idea of approximation later on in this class. Now, what can we expect in integral calculus? Well, if in differential calculus, the question was given a function, how do you find its tangent line equation, right, at any given point? Geometrically, what we're concerned with in the integral calculus is what we call the area problem, which is, so given the same graph, right, that we looked at a while ago, y equals f of x. Now we're asking a different kind of question. We're asking, well, if I take, say, two x-coordinates a and b, And I consider this region under the curve of f of x and in between a and b and above the x-axis. The area problem simply asks, well, what is the area of this region? And at first glance, doesn't really seem apparent that there are connections here to differentiation, right? Computing tangent lines from curves, and now we're computing areas under curves. But let me give you an example here. What if we now assumed that this graph of f of x were the velocity function of a car? Okay, well, what does that mean for this area under the curve here in between A and B? Well, now I claim that this area actually gives us the total distance traveled from time equals A to time equals B. And, well, how do we see that? Well, to give you an intuitive idea of why this is true, consider a constant velocity function. Let's assume that v of t is a constant, say, 50 kilometers per hour. So its graph would just look like a horizontal line at y coordinate 50.
And now let's ask the question, how far has this car traveled How far has the car traveled in T hours? Well, we know how to compute this if it's a constant velocity, right? If it's one hour at 50 kilometers per hour, you've traveled 50 kilometers. Uh, two hours, you've traveled 100 kilometers, right, and so on and so forth. You're basically just multiplying the number of hours by 50. But if you look at the graph now, we can actually see that exact calculation as an area. The area under this horizontal line in between 0 and 2, well, what is this region? This is a rectangle. And we know that for a rectangle with height 50 and length 2, its area is just the product of its dimensions, which is 100. Well, that's exactly the calculation that we did to get 100 here on the right, right? It's just the velocity times the number of hours. So in this case, it is true that the area under the curve gives you the total distance that the car has traveled. And in fact, it's true for any t, right? Just multiply 50 by t to get the distance, and that's also equal to the area under the curve. And so what I want to get at here is that this is also true for non-constant velocity functions. Like this one, for example. And so what we see is this duality of the two operations that we're looking at in calculus, right? So derivatives allow us to go from this placement, how do you compute the velocity of the car? And what we'll consider in integral calculus is exactly this part down here. Given the velocity, how do you find the displacement? of that car. And that operation is called the integral. And is also equal to geometrically this area under the curve. 